This video is called the Connecticut Compromise. And in this video, we're going to be looking at um, how the issue of representation in Congress was settled. And you'll learn another reason why the Connecticut is called the Constitution State, because Connecticut had a lot to do with solving this problem. So first of all, let's recap um, a little bit from the last video where we talked about the issues over representation, the fierce debate that was happening at the convention. We learned in that video that big states, the ones that had large populations like Virginia, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania, among others, believed that representation in Congress should be based on population. It was the only made it way to make um, the people matter and make a fair vote that since the big states had more people, they should have more say since they represent more people. On the flip side, however, there was the small states that believed that they should have equal say um, to the to all states should have equal say. It's not the opinions of the small states would be overwhelmed by the big states. Imagine living in a small state only having one or two votes where a big state would have lots of votes. It could cause problems for your state. So there was a fundamental disagreement between big states believing that they should have proportional representation and more say based on the fact that they have more people and the small states who believe that each state should have equal say no matter what the size of the state. So obviously you saw in class that there was about equal size small states and large states and there was no way to really solve this issue unless somebody gave in. Well no one gave in and they stuck to their guns and they argued this issue for a long time. So a compromise was needed, something that was going to get each side to agree. So somebody was going to have to come up with an idea to give something up. And the idea was proposed by Roger Sherman of Connecticut. And that's why it's called the Connecticut Compromise. That's why he is so famous, too, um, for his role in creating this compromise. So his idea was this. Congress would be divided into two groups called houses. In one house, it would be called the Senate. And in the Senate, it would be based on equal representation. Every state would send two people. So Delaware would have the same amount of say as Virginia in the Senate. But in the other house, it would be based on proportional representation. The number of representation representatives would be based on state population. So Virginia would have the most, and states like Delaware and Rhode Island would have very few. Now, this made small states happy because they got some of what they wanted right here in the Senate, and large states got some of what they wanted in the House. Neither side got everything they wanted. That's why it's called a compromise. In the compromise, you don't always get what you want, but you get some of it. So... You see the handshake here. This is something that the Connecticut Compromise really got this issue worked out because both sides were able to agree on something without losing everything they believed in. Small states got some of their equal representation in the Senate that will ensure that their states couldn't just be dominated by the large states. And the big states, they got some of what they wanted in the House of Representatives because they got the people represented fairly, at least in part of the government. So let's move on to the other issue that we didn't talk quite as much about in class yet, and that's the problem of slavery. In addition to representation in Congress, slavery was the other major problem. Now you might remember that northern states wanted to end the slave trade. They thought this was grotesque, people being brought over on slave ships, sold as property. This was like the most vivid image of slavery that they had a big problem with, a moral issue with, really. Um, However, the slave trade was a vital part of the southern economy. Southern people depended on um, the importation of slaves, not only so that they could buy new slaves to add to their plantations, but also there were slave traders that did this as a job. The other major issue at the convention with slavery was that southern states wanted to count slaves as citizens when calculating their total population. Um, in the House of Representatives, you'd get more votes if you had more people living in your state. Well, the southern states wanted to count their slaves, so they'd have a lot more votes in the House of Representatives. The north, of course, didn't have any slaves, and they disagreed, saying that slaves were not voting citizens. They weren't treated like people, so they shouldn't be counted like people. So how did we solve these two problems? The first um, compromise is called the Three-Fifths Compromise, and this is going to solve the problem of slaves being counted in a state's population. The way it works, um, the compromise, again, is going to give each side a little bit of what they want. The South is not going to be allowed to count all their slaves. The South will be allowed to count three-fifths of their total slave population toward their, um, toward their representation in, in government. Now, why three-fifths? Three-fifths made it about equal between the North and the South. If you counted half of the slaves, the North would get a little bit more say. If you counted like um, three-quarters of the slaves, the South would get a little bit more 
say. So they actually did three-fifths because it made sense mathematically. And this was the same way it was done under the Articles of Confederation and other governments in the past. The three-fifths compromise, you can think about it as each slave would kind of count like three-fifths of a person, while a free person would count as a full citizen. The other issue at the Constitutional Convention was about the slave trade. And the South wanted to continue the slave trade, and the North wanted the government to be able to end the slave trade, which was a big issue. So what they agreed to was a compromise, again, called the, sometimes it's called the 20 Years Compromise. I called it the Slave Trade Compromise, so you can remember it easily. But the slave trade would end in 20 years. So it was in 1787 that they agreed to this compromise. So they were going to give the southern states until 1808 to end the slave trade so they could adjust their economy. And again, here's a, a picture of the slave ship being packed to capacity. Um, this is what the North wanted to end. The South um, agreed to end it in 20 years so that they have time to adjust. So to conclude, compromise means that each side gives a little bit, but they still get some of what they want. And in these three cases, there was a compromise because both sides got some of what they wanted. Over the issue of representation in Congress, the small states got equal representation in half of Congress. In the large states, they got proportional representation in the other half of Congress. So this was a true compromise, and it was called the Connecticut Compromise because it was proposed by Roger Sherman of Connecticut. On the two slavery issues, the three-fifths compromise allowed states to count some, or three-fifths, of their slaves in their total state populations, um, but it wouldn't let them count all of them, and this kept the balance of power between the North and the South. And then finally, the, the last compromise, the 20 years compromise of the slave trade compromise, that was um, a compromise between the North and the South that the slave trade would end, but it wouldn't be for 20 years, so that the South could adjust to this major change that would be happening in their economy.